The Viking is powered by Yamaha's newest and most powerful 700 class engine ever. A single overhead cam, four valve, high output power plant that delivers optimum torque for virtually any situation or workload. And plenty of horsepower when you want it. With a top speed to get you to the job site quickly. All while being more fuel efficient. On paper, the Polaris looks to be ahead with a little more displacement. But the Viking beats the Ranger 800 in a straight up drag race. And is surprisingly close to the Ranger 900, despite its larger displacement. Now couple the Viking's power with Yamaha's best in the industry ultramatic continuously variable transmission. The most dependable CVT there is, bar none. A class exclusive centrifugal clutch maintains constant belt tension. The belt stays smoothly engaged with the drive sheaves. By design, the Polaris's CVT belt slips at idle. As you apply throttle, friction builds up until the belt catches and snaps engaged. Not once in a while, every time you accelerate from idle. Because of this design, the belt can start slipping in a variety of tough situations when you can least afford it. I mean, just listen to this quote from the Polaris owner's manual. Always warm up the belt by operating below 30 miles per hour for one mile, five miles or more when temperature is below freezing. Sounds a little inconvenient, don't you think? Engine braking allows for more smooth, consistent descents without the need to ride the brakes. The engine does the work. Due to its CVT design, the Rangers do not offer engine braking, which causes the rear tires to be very inconsistent, either grabbing or freewheeling based on a variety of conditions you might not be able to predict. The Viking's Ultramatic transmission is designed to provide predictable engine braking, and this makes for more steady downhill performance and also less brake maintenance down the road. That's what we mean by real-world tough. Whether you're on a remote job site or getting to an even more remote location after the work is done, you need a drive system that can take on any challenge. The Viking has you covered with Yamaha's exclusive on-command four-wheel drive system. Polaris's on-demand four-wheel drive system sounds similar, but when you get it out in the real world, you'll quickly see the difference between talking the talk and walking the walk. With the Viking, you get to choose two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive limited slip when you need even more traction in tough terrain. It's as easy as turning a dial. Same with the Polaris, except the rear wheels have to lose traction before the electromechanical four-wheel drive system kicks in and engages the front wheels. Not the most confident position when you're in a tough situation. Out there in the real world, when the going gets really rough, the Viking gives you the additional choice of selectable four-wheel differential lock. All four wheels pulling with maximum traction. You can't get that level of performance on any Polaris. And on the Viking, you get the same traction, forward or reverse. Now, would you rather have a machine that needs to lose traction before it can increase it? or the freedom to select the perfect drive mode that you want and the confidence of knowing it's the best for any situation. When you're working hard, the last thing you want is a machine that makes you work even harder. The Viking goes where you tell it to, aided by the most precise steering in its class. The Ranger? Well, the first thing you're going to notice is there's a lot of free play in the Ranger's steering. You have to turn the wheel back and forth quite a bit just to maintain a straight line. And when turning, you'll be spinning that wheel a lot more every time you turn. And that can be a real pain, especially in tight situations. In fact, it takes only two and a half turns of the wheel to go from lock to lock on the Viking, while it takes three and a quarter turns on the Ranger 800. Now those are numbers that can really start to add up by the end of a long day. Plus, the Viking offers the added benefit of optional electric power steering, making it easier to maneuver the roughest terrain. 
the Rangers do offer this feature, but the Polaris system is on full blast all the time. So you're going to experience almost too much assist at medium and higher speeds. While the Viking system is speed sensitive, more assist at low speeds and less as speeds increase. Ranger 800 XP's wheelbase is 76 inches. Ranger 900's wheelbase is slightly longer at 81 inches. Sounds pretty impressive. Until you compare it to the 84 inch wheelbase on the Viking. For more comfort and bump bridging capability. That long wheelbase helps create the roomiest vehicle in its class. With seating for three adults. Not just a spot on the bench. The Ranger technically seats three. But try doing some heavy terrain with a full passenger load. I feel sorry for that guy in the middle with no handhold, no shoulder room, no three-point seatbelt, no headrest, no secure footrest or legroom. Polaris likes to claim their ground clearance is an impressive 12 inches. But we found that to be just a bit of an exaggeration. It's really only a little over 11 inches. The Vikings is a real class-leading 11.8 inches. Plus, identical clearance on front and rear axles means you can choose your line with confidence. Yamaha uses a smooth skid plate the entire length of the Viking's underbody. Polaris has a plate in the middle, but leaves the sides of the undercarriage completely exposed. And all the ground clearance in the world is useless without a full skid plate, because you're going to get hung up on rocks and roots. Polaris loves talking about the Ranger's 1,000-pound payload. What they don't tell you is that 1,000-pound payload comes with a hefty compromise in performance. The vehicle may push when you try to steer it fully loaded. Also, you can't go more than 10 miles per hour, 5 if you're going up a grade, and you have to be in low range. The Viking, on the other hand, is rated to carry 600 pounds in the real world, more than you're likely to ever need. In fact, the average cargo load is considerably less. And unlike the Ranger, when the Viking is filled to its maximum capacity, it still handles with better ease and comfort. That's a number you can depend on. Both the Rangers and the Viking have a flatbed, so cargo easily slides in and out. But the Viking's high-capacity steel bed is the largest in its class. And in addition to being smaller, the Rangers, well, it's plastic. The Viking comes with cargo tie-down hooks that are just as rock-solid as the bed. To cinch down a load on the Polaris 800, you'd need to wrap a strap all the way around the bed. And just look what happens to the bed when you tighten it. And then there's the track width. The Viking fits easily down 30-inch crop rows without running down the crops themselves. The Ranger's narrower track makes this much more challenging. The Viking comes with Yamaha's 50-year heritage of excellence and an unbeatable reputation for build quality, dependability, and reliability. Starting with the Ultramatic Continuously Variable Transmission, proven to be the most durable and dependable CVT out there, period. The Ranger's owner's manual has a full page of warnings about how to avoid belt damage. With the Viking, you just get in and go. They say the devil's in the details. With the Viking, you might as well say the durability is in the details. Like the way vulnerable CV boots are protected here. And here, no protection. Like marine grade electrical connectors that are impervious to moisture. Electrical routing that's neat, tidy, and easy to follow. And on the Ranger, not so much. The Viking has this easy to change foam air filter that can be cleaned and reused. The Ranger, a once-and-done paper filter. And if it gets wet, you're done. With its easy access engine placement under the cargo bed, when it's time to check and change oil, the Viking is simple and easy to access. Again, on the Ranger, not so much. Viking, it's real world tough, inside and out.
When you're working, hunting, or just riding for fun, being comfortable isn't an option. It's a necessity. The Viking wheelbase is a full 8 inches longer than the Ranger 800 and 3 inches longer than the Ranger 900, the roomiest vehicle in its class, with seating for three adults, not just a spot on the bench. The Viking offers three individual seats with padded head restraints and plenty of legroom, plus an adjustable passenger handhold. The center seat is offset with its own footwell to help keep everyone comfortable, secure, and out of each other's way. The Ranger's middle passenger is sort of the forgotten man. No handhold, no legroom, no footwell, no three-point seatbelt or headrest. And due to the Ranger 800's engine layout, we found an excessive amount of heat wells up around the middle passenger's legs. I guess that's where the new guy gets to ride. Then there's the driving position, which is much more comfortable and natural on the Viking, where you're down inside the machine. Unlike the Ranger, where you feel like you're way up on top, an adjustable driver's seat helps out too. This feature is available on the Ranger 900, but not the 800. Plus, the Viking comes with automotive-style controls that are easy and intuitive to operate, and a full digital display. The Rangers? Well, they've got controls too but they just don't seem as well thought out. Getting in and out of the Viking is a breeze, starting with the convenience of easy latch doors. On the Ranger, you have to unhook these nets, and they're not going to provide nearly the level of protection from the elements you get with the Viking. Then there's that seat height again. Imagine having to do this several dozen times a day. On the Viking, you've got a full walkthrough floor with a non-slip grip surface plus angled roof supports for superior headroom. In fact, when it comes to space for both the driver and the passengers, in nearly every way the Viking is superior to the Ranger. And oh, by the way, that sun top is standard on most Viking models. When it comes to real-world comfort and convenience, the Ranger has a lot of catching up to do.